Hello, this is Manash Patel, and today we're going to talk to you about the VIX, the Volatility Index. We're going to talk about why it is important and why professional traders use it. This is a great time to understand what the VIX is doing because the elections are here, and it's a great tool to see exactly what's going on in the market, if the indexes are really telling you the correct story or not. So let's proceed forward and go through and explain what the VIX is. If you like this workshop video, please subscribe to the channel like the video too and if you have any questions please put it in the comment and please share this video with the other traders before we begin let's go for our disclaimer to state this is for education use only all information is owned by eii capital and cannot be distributed or without our permission we are broker neutral today for charting we will be using trading view so let's begin so here's a chart of the vix the VIX is the VIX that we're going to be using today. We're showing this in trading view, and you could see this represents the S&P 500 index. There are various different types of VIXs out there. There's one for gold, there's one for crude oil, and so forth. So everything that we're doing here, you could even apply to those different products too. But we want to concentrate on the S&P 500 VIX reason why it's a great great tool to see exactly what's really going on with the market so if you use the s p mini futures and the vix together combined together when they tell you the same story you know the market's going in the correct direction if you have discrepancies between the vix and the s p 500 futures then you know there's a problem and we're going to go through this step by step with you and it's a perfect time for you to learn reason why is you had COVID that happened and you could see exactly what's going on remember the vix measures how much volatility is in the market volatility represents risk the higher the volatility the more risk you could take on reason why is price could move a huge percentage in a short amount of time and that's not good okay in fact if you look at the stock market and the vix they're inverse related in other words if the stock market is going up the VIX is going down. If the VIX stock market's going down, then the VIX is going up. So it has an inverse relationship to the stock market, okay? So if you ever see the stock market going up and the VIX is going up at the same time, then you got a major problem and that's what we're looking for. So in theory, if the markets are going higher, and the VIX should be going lower. And if you don't see that, the markets going higher is a major problem and it could be false and it could reverse. So you have to be very careful. So let's go through here and look at things. This, you could see there's a gap here. Remember, this is a weekly chart where every bar represents one week. Over here, you could see this is where COVID happened. You had a gap up here, you opened here, and you could see the VIX went from the normal range, which is typically around 10 to about, this was about 19, 20, was the normal range that we typically have seen in a trending market. Due to COVID, we sat there, we gapped up here to 2230, and then we moved as high as 80% all the way up here. So this is during COVID time. So when this, the markets went down, the VIX went up, and that's kind of what you're seeing. So you had a great relationship between the E-mini and the VIX and everything going forward. Here you could see towards the end, end of March, going in April, the VIX is starting to come down, and this is basically represented the same thing as the E-mini and the S&P 500 is starting to bottom out in the beginning of March, sorry, in March, and starting to go up going into April and so forth, okay? So here you could see the VIX is starting to come down, down, down here towards the end of March here, going into April, which pretty much led the stock market to sit there bottom out and to start to going up. Now, what was interesting is due to this gap here, you have a major support at the bottom of that gap bar right there, and the high represents the resistance up here. And you could see here what has been happening with the markets going forward, okay? And what we've done is we used our multiple time frame crosses. These are crosses here. They represent multiple time frame support resistance. And what we've done is drawn lines here to show you exactly where the major support resistances are. And the way it looks is basically the markets are going up. This resistance formed right there. 
then you had a support slash resistance right there and here you could see we closed below that resistance right there that support we broke it came back and held it when we held it here we had a high probability to come down to that support we did not do that at all in fact we fell short since we fell short here it came back here without touching the support that's not good at all since it did not touch the support here it came here and broke it and that's exactly what you saw here going forward and that's the reason why i broke it the next time we close below it here then we went on a journey to the bottom to the support which is the bottom of this gap bar right there and held that level completely going forward so that told you here in order for the stock market to keep on going you really needed the vix to sit there and break the support it did not do that at all so when the stock market was making all-time highs and got past the covid level for the s p 500 and started making new all-time highs there was a problem and the problem was is that even though the s p 500 was past the covid level that it was and started making all-time highs the problem was the VIX was still holding the support here. So all the new highs that the market was making was not really true at all. And that's very critical for you to understand. There was a discrepancy. The markets kept on going higher and the VIX did not go lower. When that happened, it told you the markets going up was false. And that was a good indication at that point to start taking profits on your bullish positions long term going forward. If you did that, you had no problems. Then we started experiencing volatility. We came back up here. We held. Once we hit this resistance level, now we got a high probability to come to that support. However, notice one thing. We didn't sit there and hold the support. We kept on falling short of it over and over and over. That is not a good sign at all. It's very similar to this price action right there. And then today, the markets went down drastically and you could see here we came exactly to this resistance level right there and we stopped this is a very critical junction right now if tomorrow and by the end of this week if we close above this level here the vix is going to go higher and the markets are going to continue to go down if we hold this level here tomorrow then the markets have a chance to go up to into the presidential elections so we're in a very critical situation right now where it's do or die and you could see here based on price action here where this never touched the support and this hasn't touched the support either the problem comes down to is there's a high probability for us to break this the rate later on part of this week and to close above this level here and possibly come all the way back up here to 44 percent that means there's a possibility for the markets to go down either another five to ten percent more by during this week if we break this resistance level there so that's kind of how you use the vix going forward remember vix is an inverse relation to the to the stock market what you want to do is you want to see the stock market going up if the stock market's going up the vix should be going down if it isn't going down the upward movement in the market's fault for the reverse relationship is also true today the stock markets went down drastically that means the vix should be sitting there going up drastically and it did and you have a correlation here that did happen so this the movement down was real and we got to a major resistance level over here you could see the stock markets kept on going higher and higher and higher but the VIX never broke the support here. So this is very critical for us to always look at on a weekly basis going forward. And we do that on our weekly trading calls that we have. If you guys are interested in knowing more about that, you can send an em email to info at eiicapital.com. I hope that helps understand how the VIX is used. If you have any questions, feel free to sit there and comment at the bottom of this video and we'll get back to you with all the questions that you have. Please subscribe to our video channel, like this video and share it to other people so the knowledge goes out to everyone. Thank you and have a good day.